And now, moving into a new chapter and some new material, and we'll really try to take the time we need here because this is stuff students continue to struggle with in the college. But the next chapter is on algebra. And the material we want to talk about today is variables and setting up expressions. So we have used variables during this class already. It's really hard to talk about math without using variables. But a variable is a value usually represented by a letter. X and Y are kind of the classic letters, but you also see others. And it's used to represent either unknown or arbitrary numbers. So variables are used in a different way. Um, let's look at three ways that variables are used. Two of them we'll look at in some depth. One of them we'll just kind of skate over briefly. Use one of the variables. And this is what we've been doing with in this class already. But we use variables to make sort of arbitrary statements, or maybe a general would be a better word than arbitrary. In fact, it definitely is. General statements about numbers. So without variables, you can say that 2 plus 7 is 7 plus 2. And you can say that 3 plus 5 is 5 plus 3. And you can say that 1 plus 4 is 4.1, and so on. And all of these statements are telling you, you know, the same information, more or less. They're saying that when you add, order doesn't matter. 2 plus 7, 7 plus 2, order doesn't matter. 3 plus 5, 5 plus 3, order doesn't matter. Well, of course, there are an infinite number of numbers, so you could make an infinite list of statements like that. But you can also just say that no matter what x is, x plus y equals y plus x. So working with variables allows us to take 
what would have to be an infinite list of statements. You'd have a statement for every possible combination of numbers. And turn it into a single statement. And we've seen a bunch of examples of this in this class already. I think in general, we use A, B, and C rather than X and Y. But you know, we've made the statement, for example, that any number plus zero is the original number back again. And again, this is a situation where, you know, you've got an infinite list of statements. There are an infinite number of numbers, and each of those different numbers gives you an infinite class of statements. But the power of using a variable is that you can collapse an infinite list of statements into a single statement. And I don't see it in the textbook in this section. It may show up in a later section. But these equalities have a special name. They're called identities. And ide an identity is an equation that is always true. No matter what, values, the variables have. So there's a, I'm going to write two equations on the board, x plus y equals y plus x. And x plus y equals a two. These are both equations involving x and y. An equation is just two statements connected by an equal sign. This first equation is an identity. It doesn't matter what x is, it doesn't matter what y is, this equation is always true. The second equation is not. The second equation can be true. For example, if x equals zero and y equals two, that would make the second equation true. Zero plus two equals two. Or if x equals one and y equals one, that would make the second equation true. One plus one does equal two. But it can also be false. I mean, if you let x be zero, k 
Can y be zero, for example? The statement that x plus y equals two is not a true statement. So it's a little unfortunate that, I mean, we use the same symbols here. We just use the equal sign, even though these two statements are really different on a pretty fundamental level. This first statement is telling you something is always true. The second statement is saying, well, this is sometimes true. And the traditional thing you do with a statement like this second one is try to solve it, to try to find the values of X and Y that make it be true. Well, we're not going to be solving equations today. We're, um, I think, slowing down to one section of the textbook per class period or thereabouts. And solving equations is in a different section. Let's see. And I call this use one to make general statements about numbers. And here, what we have here is what I call the first use, x plus y equals y plus x. That's a general statement about numbers. The second statement, is some kind of different use. X plus Y equals two is not always true. So the way I'm numbering these is totally arbitrary. It's not what's in the textbook as far as I know. And if you open a different textbook, it will be called use one and use two. But the second use and maybe kind of the more famous use is to express a mathematical statement involving one or more unknown quantities. And this is the use that we're going to spend more of our time on, because this is also the use that's going to get us into solving equations and things like that. So, for example, I order pizza for my Dungeons and Dragons game. Let's say I order, I mean, I order pizzas, not individual slices. But let's say if you take the pizzas I order and put them together, I order a total of 20 slices of pizza. At the end of the game, there are seven slices left. And sort of the natural 
question that I think arises from this. How many slices of pizza did we eat? And again, this section isn't interested yet in teaching us to solve equations. This section is interested in setting up equations. So I'm going to set up an equation that would answer that question, but not solve it. So we need to give our variable a name, and the classic names are X and Y, but when you have a word problem, it's nice to try to give your variables names that kind of indicate what they mean. So because we're interested in the number of slices that were eaten, we'll call our variable E. And then we just sort of think, and now we have introduced, we have seen addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So we start with 20 slices. We subtract E, and again, we're subtracting E because of the intuition or the understanding we hopefully have. We start with some amount of food. We're now removing slices from that, and subtraction is the operation that takes things from a group and removes them from it. So we start with the number of slices we had, which was 20. We remove the slices that we ate. And at the end of the game, seven slices remain. 20 minus E equals seven. And again, looking ahead a bit, you could probably figure out that E equals 13. But again, we'll actually talk about that um, next week. So this is the use that we're going to come back to. We're going to look at a few other examples in this class period, and they're going to be coming back to this that I called use for two. Now at least touch on a third use. And I don't know how likely it is that you're going to be using this in your elementary ed classes. Um, there was There was some time ago now, I don't actually know the year, but there was um, something that, that thought it was going to be a new paradigm. It was called New Math, and the idea was that instead of making students memorize a bunch of multiplication tables and stuff, we'd have them do other stuff stuff that was supposed to be either more interesting or more useful. And new math failed, and whether or not it deserved to fail, whether it was just, you know, a bunch of parents being grumpy that their kids were learning different stuff than they did, that's a discussion I'm not qualified to really have. 
But one of the big things in a new math, and maybe sort of one of the only things that survived the wreckage, is the idea that we might introduce sex to children at a young age. So this might, I don't know, be totally new to some of you, but if A and B are collections, which we call sets of objects, then you don't need to memorize, well, it shows up in the textbook. Maybe you should know this notation if you haven't seen it before. This is called the intersection of A and B. And it's the objects in both the sets. And the way this gets formally represented is that A intersects B equals, and here's where this relates to our variable, it equals the values of X And I am going to part with the textbook. I am not going to use the sort of specialized notation the textbook uses. I'll just write it out. It's the values of x, where x is in A and x is in B. So the other way, I mean, the textbook has a few others, but I think there are really three. The other way that variables get used is in describing sets. Um, another example where you have two variables, you can look at the numbers x and y, such that x squared plus y squared equals one. And if you look at the values that satisfy that equality, it ends up being all of the points on a circle. But use two is the use we're really interested in. Use three set theory kind of, I don't want to say fringe, but you're not going to be defining that many sets for your elementary ed students. And if you are, you're probably not going to be doing it using this super formal notation. Use one, super important, but also there's not a lot we can really say about it. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Use two is the case that we're really interested in because use two sort of goes somewhere. Use two is expressing a mathematical statement. And once we get a mathematical statement, there's still stuff for us to do. We can then talk about solving it. 
So this is the use that's going to get most of our attention in this class. And you'll therefore do a few more examples with it. So let's say that someone, Kareem, is collecting cards for a card game. So something like Pokemon or Magic the Gathering, where you first have to buy the cards before you use them in a game. The cards come in sets. Again, if you think of something like Yu-Gi-Oh, there might be monster cards and magic cards and effect cards, stuff like that. So let's say they come in sets. There are 15 sets total. And each set contains 72 cards. Kareem already has 216 cards. Let's make that look less like a UV. He wants all of them. So the question we'll pose is how many cards does Kareem still need? And again, the book tends to get a little ahead of itself. I mean, I like it fine, but um, the book will have an example like this, and in this example, you'll solve an equation, and then the next section, you'll learn to solve equations, and it's, wait a minute, something's a little out of order here. We'll just set up the equation that will answer this question without actually solving it. Mm. And when I say we, I mean we. Let's use C for the number of cards Kareem still needs. So the equation we're looking for is that we have the total number of cards minus the number of cards Kareem has already. Equal with the number of cards Kareem still needs. And 
Uh, I mean, it didn't really do any harm, but let me erase that because it's not going to be the variable we need. So let's think this through. The number of cards Kareem has is given to us, 216. How many cards are there in total? I mean, if you can't give me a number, at least tell me, I shouldn't say at least, because I couldn't give me a number off the top of my head. How do you find that out, let's 72 say? 72 times 15. Exactly correct. There are 72 set um, cards per set, and there are 15 sets. And Google is being irritating. 72 times 15, there we go. 1,080 cards total. So 1,080. Take away 216 is the number of cards Kareem still would need. And I misjudged the textbook. I criticized it wrongly. We don't need to know how to solve an equation to find n here. We can just go to our calculator, or I mean, I guess we could do it by hand, but but now that we're out of the doing stuff by hand sections, I'm less and less interested in that. 1080 minus 216, 870. You do 10, not 216. Ah, thank you for catching that. Mistake, you're right. 864. So again, I mean, you wouldn't probably think of this in terms of solving an equation because probably when you hear the phrase solving the equation, you think about adding terms or subtracting terms or doing something. But we did solve for n here. We wrote the equation down and writing the equation down allowed us not just to set up, but also to answer that question. Let's keep with this example. Um, we're harping with reality. The reality is that card companies make it extremely inconvenient to just buy an entire set because they want you to spend money on packs of cards. But let's say, let's say we can buy a set. And let's remind ourselves that a set has 72 cards in it for 27 dollars. And let's leave Kareem and introduce our newest protagonist. Nicole, who wants to buy a set, 
but can't because she does not have the money at hand. She only has nine dollars. So she finds two friends. Also with nine dollars, they evenly split the cost, and then they take the set that they buy, they split the cost, they buy set, then they evenly Divide the cards in the set between the three of them. And I don't know why I put a question mark there. The question is yet to come, how many cards will Nicole get out of this process? Bill Paul, the answer to this question, the number of cards Nicole is going to get N. Does anybody want to take a stab at the left-hand side of that equation? 72 divided by three. 72 divided by three is precisely correct. If we have a bunch of cards and we want to split them into even parts. The arithmetic operation that takes a group and divides it into even pieces is division. So one more example. Here's an example that isn't going to have a numerical answer. We'll introduce a new hero, Mario. And our new hero is on a diet. He wants to only eat 1,200 calories per day. Okay, so skip breakfast. He gets out of bed late and does not have breakfast, but for lunch, he has a hamburger and fries. So a hamburger, let's call that 250 calories, a fry, let's call that three calories per fry. If Mario eats F, Fry 
radius. So again, we like to use letters that represent something if we can. If Mario eats F fries, how many calories should his dinner be and that's introduce another variable. We'll call the number of calories his dinner ought to be D. And you probably know that, you know, a lot of equations have two variables and have the form one of the variables equals something involving the other variable. So D equals, let's see, how should I phrase this question? I mean, I would describe, so we have a, a number of calories that he's allowing himself to eat, which is 1,200. And we have a number of calories that he's already eaten, the calories he's eaten for lunch. So addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. What operation are we looking for here? I have a question. Yeah. How many fries do we know he's ate? Because that will... We... Don't know. The number of fries is a variable that will show up in the equation. Okay. Good question. Thank you. Okay, maybe that question was a little open ended. What I'm trying to get at is that he has some. Number of calories he's willing to eat. And he's got some connection of calories that he's already eaten. So the number of calories that he's willing to eat minus the number of those calories that he's already eaten is the number of calories that he can still eat. And let's investigate these separately. One of these, there's not really much investigation to be done. It says right in the problem, he'll eat 1,200 calories. How many calories has he already eaten? Oh, he's already eaten the hamburger. So how many calories is that? 250. And if fries are three calories per fry, and he eats F fries, how many calories is that? Three times F is exactly correct, giving us 1,200 minus 250 plus 3 times F. And if you wanted to simplify this, you need to remember 
that this subtraction in front of the parentheses is going to distribute over this addition. So we'll have a minus 250 and also a minus 3F. And then let's see. 1,200 minus 200 is 1,000 minus another 50 is 950 minus 3 times F. And there's an expression relating the number of fries that he eats and the number of calories he can have for dinner. And that brings us almost immediately to almost uh, exactly, I should say, to the end of class. So I will. Yeah. So um, number one, when we're subtracting our decimals, does it matter which one we put above the other one? Um, just like when. It up. Yeah, I mean, just like when you're subtracting, um. This one has 1.256 minus 4, so you want the negative? Yeah. yeah, I want the negative, but when you write it, remember that the way you do smaller minus bigger is to do the big one on the top and then just throw in a negative sign at the end. Okay, and then also, where are our um, exams by chance? Like our grades for that? Yes, I. Totally could be a next week problem. I just no, they'll be. I mean, I think they're just not posted, in which case it will be a five minutes after class when I get back to my office. Probably, okay, great. Because they are graded. Awesome. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep.